Man, Tesla crushes it in the Q3 earnings, and it's ridiculous. The stock has gone to the roof, man. So we're going to dive in it. We're going to read over the actual report versus just kind of just be hype about it. So here we go. We're going to dive right into it. As you can see, Q3 2024 update live and direct. And if you guys have actually never seen something like this, then welcome aboard. We're going to go right into the summary because that's where it's at. That's where the information is. So we're going to go boom right there, live and direct. And we delivered strong results in quarter three with growth and vehicle deliveries from both sequential on year on year and resulting in a record third quarter volume. So we also recognize our second highest quarter of regulatory credit revenues. People are going to yell about that as other OMEs are still behind on meeting emission requirements. Okay, so that's what it is. But this is the most important part, COGS. COGS and then cost, right? And let's dive right into it. Our cost of goods sold per vehicle came down to its lowest level ever, 35,100, in order to continue accelerating the world's transition through sustainable to sustainable energy. Uh, we need to make EVs affordable for everyone. Now watch this, included making our total cost of ownership per mile competitive with all forms of transportation. Preparation remains underway for our offering of new vehicles, including more affordable models. So this is what people have been going crazy about, whether they're going to do it or not. Optimus, oh, there's not going to be a 25K car. So this is just kind of an emphasis on relax, guys, okay? There'll still be that option. And then he says also, which we will begin launching in the first half of 2025. So 2025, maybe 2026 is really irrelevant. Are they going to execute it? That's the important part. At our We Robot event in October 10th, we detailed our long-term goal, though. And this is the long term of offering optimist or autonomous transport with a cost per mile below ride share, personal car ownership, and even public transit. So actually, at that point, you guys are able to get a chauffeur for a low price. For me, cool. Let's go down to the most important segment. And what I've been arguing with people for a long time when I talked about Tesla and they want to talk about EVs, I want to talk about energy. Let me bring this up on the jumbo screen right here. Energy business achieves another strong quarter with a record gross margin. Record gross margin. Remember that. Additionally, the mega factory in Lathorpe produced 200 mega packs in a week. So that's good. Ramping is going. This is the only energy storage manufacturing facility in North America, guys. So this is one of a kind. And when they built it, they built it from the ground up. Check one of my videos where we were actually right there with the project or the factory manager and hearing what he had to say about it. Powerwall deployments reached a record for the second quarter in a row as we continue to ramp Powerwall 3. Good job. And then now we're going to the next one. Despite sustainable macroeconomic headwinds and other pulling back on EV investments, we remain focused on expanding our vehicle and our energy product lineup. I'm super excited about the energy product, all right? Reducing costs and making critical investments in AI projects and production capacity. And we believe these efforts will allow us to capitalize on the ongoing transition in the transportation and energy sectors. Energy sector. Got to actually keep your eyes on that. As you can see, a 52% increase on energy generation and storage revenue. And then also other services, and that increased by 29%. So that's good too. As we go down here to the financial statement, which most of y'all people actually really care about, profitability, let's focus on that one. And so lowering the cost per vehicle and including lower raw material costs, freight and duties and other one-time charges. And then here's another positive, growth in energy generation and storage and services and other gross profit and higher FSD revenue recognition. And then for the release related to Cybertruck and certain features such as actual smart summon, this is just another feature. So with more features generates more revenue. And then growth in vehicle deliveries, we know about that one. Higher regulatory credit revenue, we know about that one, and decrease in operating expenses, including cost reduction efforts. This is something that, you know, Tesla is very good at, and I think this is an IP intellectual property that they have. They have the ability to do that. And then quarter in cash, cash equivalent in investments in Q3 is $33.6 billion. So that's really good. Uh, this, you know, the year previously was, oh, well, $2.9 billion was primarily the result of positive free cash flow of 2.7 billion. 
So here we go. Good results across the board. Now, vehicle capacity is very interesting. And so they talk about that in the production of the seventh millionth vehicle on October 22nd. And then we go to the U.S., Nevada, and Texas. Remember, guys, these are making America great because it's three different factories. So you don't complain like you complain with Ford GM. This is why I say if you're pro-American, you got to be pro-Tesla because at the end of the day, these are three different factories, some of the best performing technologically advanced factories in the entire world. And they're stationed and established in the United States of America. Who else is doing it? So we got the Refresh Model 3 and it's successful in the Q3. The cyber truck production increased and achieved positive growth margins for the first time. All right. And the preparation of semi factory continues and remains on track with builds scheduled to start by the end of 2025. And so that's that, you know, for the 18 wheeler, right? The electric one. And so these are all in America. We got also China and Shanghai, Shanghai, China, and then we got Berlin. And then, you know, Shanghai factory recently achieved a notable two milestones, right? Producing the three millionth vehicle in October and exporting one millionth vehicle in September. And the cost of goods sold per vehicle in Shanghai factory improved also and at its lowest level. And shout outs to Berlin. Um, we have some good things, Model 3 and et cetera, sales of EV. One of the biggest things was Norway, which is now has over 6,000 units on the road. It's basically like an electric vehicle country. So shout outs to them. Uh, here's some value add. And these are maybe not so solid as of right now, but possible increase on revenue and the growth of the company, which is artificial intelligence, software, and hardware, right? In Q3, we released the 12.5 FSD, so supervised again. So everything's supervised. And then with a 5X increase, and parameter count and other architectural choices that we plan to continue scaling in Q4. And they released actually smart summons. Uh, you can go check that out on the internet. Um, drive to you in parking lots, FSD supervised cyber truck customers, uh, including in the end neural nets for highway driving for the first time. And this is a big one. We deployed and are training ahead of schedule the 29K H100 cluster at Gigafactory, Texas. So imagine this massive computing power inside of America and the best state in America, Texas. And they're expected to be 50K H100 capacity by the end of October, which is good news. And then vehicle and other software, we still got the YouTube and Amazon Music as native apps on the actual, you could say, entertainment council inside of these vehicles. Uh, other cool things, just funny things, not so big. This is the big one right here, battery powertrain and manufacturing. Here again, we're talking about fundamentals, engines that drive all these products. In October, we unveiled our cyber cab and robo van. And people saw that, both designed pretty cool without the pedals. Cyber cab will be built on next generation platform, which includes a new powertrain and estimates of et cetera. Now Q3, we produced the 11 million 4680 cell and that's batteries, guys. And we produce batteries. So surprise, surprise, if some people did not know that. And continue to progress our dry cathode uh, manufacturing lines. Other highlights is our energy and service and other businesses are becoming increasingly profitable parts of Tesla. So now that's finally on the books. People are actually seeing it. And now the value could increase based off of that. Because when I was saying energy, 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 not EV, but EB, you know, electric battery, people weren't listening to that. ES, electric storage, people weren't listening. It was only EVs. And now that is showing on the financial spreadsheet, now people are believing. Now for me, you're like, oh, you must have guessed it. No, well, if you build out a factory <laughs> and you're selling out product and you got a back catalog, that's ridiculous. And you look at the industry of energy in itself, it needs to be revolutionized. It's about 50 years old as far as the infrastructure. And when it comes down to the software and the management of our electric energy and security, I mean, it's outdated. Shoot, I, 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 I saw the news article, I don't know how accurate it is, that Elon's looking for people that are engineers that could you know, specialize in storage and energy management systems, and they're paying crazy amounts of money, and you could be anywhere in the world because we need those people badly in America. Let's go to energy generation and energy storage, right? The energy business achieved record gross margins, 30.5%. So 30.5% in Q3. That's good. 
Hopefully we can get 50% software margins, right? And so it increased uh, despite lower mega pack volumes. So still the margins are good despite the lower volume. The volume, sometimes you get better margins, but even then a sophisticated process will do it, okay? Powerwall achieved record deployments in Q3 in the second quarter in a row, in a row. Remember that ramp of Powerwall 3 at Lathorpe Mega Factory continues successfully, uh, demonstrating 200 mega pack production, 40 gigawatts annual run rate in a single week. And then as of Q3, over 100,000 Powerwalls were enrolled in the virtual power plant program, delivering additional financial value to owners while providing much needed support to the grid during periods of stress. And that's important. That's the software side. So not only are you making money from the hardware, but from the software also. And then we have Shanghai Mega Factory remains on track to begin shipping mega packs in first quarter of 2025. Now that's going to be one of the greatest things. So, you know, much love to the factory in Lathorpe, but that's like a makeshift factory that they kind of retrofitted to, you know, from a Sears. Sears previously had it, so they changed it up. And just like Fremont, Fremont will never be as good as Shanghai because that's specifically built for the purpose of manufacturing cars in the way that, of course, we do it at Tesla. And so this mega factory is not going to be something that's retrofitted, rehabbed and reconstructed. And we got to work with the current, you know, land, lot, infrastructure. No, we're building it from the ground up specifically for mega packs. So it could be built out more effective and efficient, right? Optimizing that actual space because we've been able to build it from the ground up. And other services, you know, other businesses achieve record gross profits, uh, Q3 growing over 90%. Well, that's good, right? Supercharging. Uh, definitely gross profit was driven mostly by higher gross profit generation from superchargers. And the service center margins improved and higher gross profit generation from parts sales and merchandise. So go buy some merchandise from Tesla. <laughs> so the outlook is very good. The volume, our company is currently between two major growth waves. So realize that the first one of uh, being the global expansion of Model 3 and Y platforms. And we believe the next one will be initiated by advanced autonomy and the introduction of new products, including those built on our next generation platforms. So this is a redesign of the Henry Ford assembly line. So that's going to be maybe amazing, right? Speculation, but they've been able to deliver historically, especially with the Giga casting. And despite ongoing macroeconomic conditions, we expect to achieve slight growth in vehicle deliveries in 2024. Energy storage deployments are expected to be more than double year over year in 2024. That's the bang for the buck, guys, at least my opinion, my humble opinion. That is the bang for the buck. Of course, everybody else is, you know, ramped about artificial intelligence. That's cool. That's, that's sweet. That's cute. But I'm really like... Energy is mine. It's like storage, <laughs> robot, and the FSD, if that's realized. Ah. Kumamatata, it means no worries for the rest of your days. <laughs> but if it doesn't, you know, that's, that's also cool, right? And we have sufficient liquid um, to fund the roadmap, long-term capacity expansion plans, uh, other expenses. And then while we continue to e execute on innovations and reduce the cost of manufacturing and operations over time, we expect our hardware related products to be accompanied by an accelerated AI software and fleet based profits. So again, we continue to do the greatest. Now, of course, most people and including me are not banking on this, but let me just finish out our purpose built robo taxi product will continue to pursue a revolutionary unbox manufacturing strategy. And then they have some cool photos that we can check out. And you can look at global BEV market share 12 months. Look at China. Look how large China is. That's redonkulous, right? China's up there, guys. So if we can just like kind of focus on China a bit, we can actually kill it. Their market share is ridiculous. Uh, estimated life cycle emission of gas cars versus robo taxi. So that's something that's how the robo taxi is for you guys who haven't seen it. We robot robo van, um, an inductive charger, you know, wireless charger, basically Optimus robot, 
they were able to be there with the people on the ground. So that was very interesting. I believe these are the batteries, definitely power wall three and the construction of the factory that's going to have those 18 wheelers, electric vehicles. Look at that. That was nothing but barren land before. And look at it now. I mean, the amounts of wealth that could be created just from a company is ridiculous. As you can see, these vehicle deliveries, uh, operating cash flow, net income, financials look solid and look good and very interesting. And this is just the beginning of the umbrella company. <laughs> I know that sounds funny, right? We're going to be the umbrella company, but you know, energy storage is where I'm betting the whole track. So again, guys, I greatly appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can get more of this information. Great earnings. The market is going bananas, monkey, all that stuff. But, you know, did I invest prior to the earnings report? No, because historically when we've done earnings reports, we got killed on the markets the previous day, regardless if we do better or not. But apparently that has changed for like one of the first times in my experience. So or at least while I tracked it, right? So, but I don't really check for the stock and track the stock as much as I track the company and its fundamentals. As you can see, it's done pretty well. Um, up and down, very volatile for a long time, as you can see, but I've been invested longer than five years. So we could talk about 2019, 2018 is when I got in the game. So that's like all the way back here around like $19, right? So at the end of the day, it's vastly different today. 20,000% return coming from its infancy. Shoot, in 2010, it was a dollar and 30 cents. Imagine that. So massive amounts of wealth growth. It's really looking bright for the future. Again, don't track the stock, track the performance of the company. The stock shall reflect. That's not investment advice, though. I see you guys in the next one. Like, share, subscribe. And remember, we are the future robots. Taxes and, and everything else probably ends up being 30 or 40 cents a mile.